The 2026 regulations will undoubtedly reshape the sport as with these engine changes will enter a new era in the sport, a step closer to that net zero 2030 goal the FIA and FOM promised to deliver. And while there may be many different changes already announced, we have now received confirmation about a very famous system that's about to make a return in the sport in some way. How will this additional change influence the F1 cars and could it make a significant difference? Nearly a decade has passed since the inception of Formula One's turbo hybrid era, transitioning from the 2.4 liter atmospheric V8s to the current 1.6 liter V6 turbo engines coupled with electric motors initially faced criticism, mainly regarding the reduced noise and performance differences among powertrains. Although there is nostalgia among fans for the thunderous, loud and egasmic V10 era, fans slowly started to accept the present day symphony of deep growls over piercing screams and performance differentials have also come closer over the past nine years. Looking ahead to 2026, the turbo hybrid power plants will evolve into their next iteration and this means Formula One's current formula will have endured a full 12 years, surpassing the lifespans of other engine eras such as the V8s from 2006 to 2013, the 3-litre V10 era from 1995 to 2005, and the expansion of naturally aspirated engines to 3.5 litres from 1987 to 1994. While the upcoming power units will maintain some similarities, including the presence of a 1.6 litre V6 internal combustion engine, significant changes are planned to align Formula One with the evolving automotive landscape. This adaption seeks to provide not only to the increasing number of automotive suppliers involved, but also to the shifting industry demands. And in light of the expanding array of all electric championships in motorsport, Formula One aims to demonstrate the lasting relevance of the internal combustion engine. When the current powertrain regulations were introduced, Formula One struggled to highlight their potential as highly efficient hybrid engines capable of generating substantial power while significantly reducing fuel consumption compared to the previous naturally aspirated V8s. However, their value has now been recognized and Formula One aims to build upon that recognition. Currently, the MGUK positioned on the rear axle can generate approximately 160 brake horsepower, resulting in a propulsion bias towards the internal combustion engine ranging from 9010 to 8020. This balance is set to shift towards a more even split, with the MG UK responsible for 350 kilowatts, equivalent to 470 brake horsepower of the total power output, leaving the internal combustion engine to produce the remainder. And this adjustment maintains the current powertrain's output of around 1,000 brake horsepower while utilizing less fuel. However, the MGUH often criticized will be removed from the overall package and despite its usefulness in the specific context of Formula One where harnessing waste energy from a turbine to reduce lag was advantageous, its applicability in the broader automotive industry has been limited. Deleting the MGUH is seen as the most straightforward way to satisfy both current and potential manufacturers' interests and encourage their involvement in Formula One. The minimum mass of the power unit is set to increase to 185 kilograms from the current 151 kilograms, allowing for a heavier internal combustion engine and a larger motor generator unit to accommodate the upgraded power output. While the fundamental characteristics of the base 1.6 litre V6 turbo engine remain unchanged, the overall combustion system will undergo significant revisions. Mercedes engine chief Hywell Thomas elaborated that this involves a completely different combustion system 
due to reduced fuel usage, involving adjustments to factors such as compression ratio and permissible boost pressure. These alterations present a new set of constraints, resulting in a power unit that, while visually similar, will be fundamentally distinct. The 2026 engine regulations have gathered the highest manufacturer interest on the grid since 2008, marking a return to the era when six engine suppliers were present. Mercedes, Ferrari and Renault maintain their long-standing commitments, while Honda re-enters the championship despite never truly departing. Red Bull powertrains teams up with Ford, marking the Blue Oval's first return to the grid since its departure way back in 2004. Additionally, Audi enters F1 as a constructor for the first time through its majority acquisition of Sauber. However, the circumstances surrounding the presence of six manufacturers on the grid differ significantly. In 2008, there was a notable exodus of suppliers due to the financial crisis, leading to the departure of Honda, BMW and Toyota over the following years, and only through the intervention of Bernie Eccleston and Max Mosley did Cosworth return for the 2010 season. In contrast, the current influx of new manufacturers is driven by the advancements in regulations, and while factors such as F1's growing popularity and improved financial terms have undoubtedly played a role, it's the evolution of the regulations themselves that has enticed new entrants. The initial hybrid introductions in 2009, such as KERS, the precursor to the MG UK, did not receive widespread acclaim. BMW, Renault, McLaren, Mercedes and Ferrari developed their own 80 brake horsepower motors, but BMW and Renault abandoned the technology midway through the season due to its limited potential and as a result, no new manufacturers were attracted to the sport. It's only really in recent years that the more sophisticated hybrid systems have garnered significant interest. But the FIA introduced new changes as they even plan to bring back the famous Kurs Boost by allowing for a high-speed override mode function to its energy deployment power unit map starting from 2026. Previously, it was disclosed that the turbocharged 1.6-litre V6 internal combustion engine component of the power unit would be scaled down from 550 to 560 kilowatts to 400 kilowatts, 535 brake horsepower, while the battery element would increase from 150 kilowatts to 350 kilowatts, 470 brake horsepower to compensate for this loss, despite the removal of the MGUH. The latest iteration of the 2026 power unit regulations has been unveiled by the FIA, introducing new functionalities for the more potent hybrid system aimed at enhancing wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing. There had been a long-standing aspiration to incorporate a push-to-pass feature into the new power unit, allowing drivers to control energy deployment rather than relying solely on the system's automatic dispensation throughout a lap. And although not fully detailed in the latest regulations, Article 5.4.8 lays out some initial parameters. The first part establishes a glide path for energy deployment from the ERS SK hybrid system up to 345 kilometers an hour, 215 miles per hour. The subsequent section introduces what the FIA terms an override mode, enabling drivers to deploy extra power to supplement the energy from the glide path, providing an additional boost up to 355 kilometers an hour, 220.5 miles per hour. This secondary function introduces a strategic element to energy deployment requiring drivers to decide when or if to utilize it as it becomes available. Similar to the KERS function used between 2009 to 2013, drivers can allocate this energy for attacking, defending or improving lap times. With the heightened reliance on the hybrid aspect of the power unit from 2026 onwards, drivers may not always have access to the override function. Even if they do, its usage could potentially lead to an energy deficit. 
under normal deployment conditions later in the lap or over subsequent laps. Utilizing this new system during wheel-to-wheel -wheel battles will be just one aspect of how drivers and their engineers will employ it to extract the maximum performance from the car throughout a lap and over the course of a race. Additionally, the FIA will introduce new chassis rules in 2026 to reduce car weight by 40 to 50 kilograms. The cars will be shorter, likely with a reduced wheelbase of 3,400 millimeters from the current maximum of 3,600 millimeters and narrower by 10 centimeters from 2,000 millimeters to 1,900 millimeters. Furthermore, active aerodynamics will also integrate into the 2026 regulations with F1 still refining the parameters. While the aim is to eliminate DRS trains, active aero will contribute to energy regeneration, ensuring the full 350 kilowatts of power is available from the motor. It is anticipated that instead of DRS, wings will flatten on straights, reducing drag and alleviating the demand on the battery pack for speed generation. Teams have raised a significant concern regarding the 2026 engine specifications though. Initial simulations suggested that excessive lifting was necessary to charge the battery adequately for the motor generator unit to deliver its full power and Max Verstappen even reported having to downshift along the straight at Monza in his early simulations to aid in recharging for the rest of the lap. However, F1's chief technical officer Pat Simmons denied these claims, stating that more advanced simulations indicate that such measures won't be necessary following adjustments to the regulations. He explained that the performance profile of a 2026 car in simulation now closely resembles that of 2023, thanks to the evolution of the initially proposed regulations. Ultimately, it will be the team's responsibility to devise strategies for energy recovery throughout the lap to ensure the MGUK maintains optimal uptime, mapping out usage to determine when the full 1000 brake horsepower is required will be crucial, making software a fiercely contested area for performance improvements akin to Formula E. We're definitely in for a treat in 2026, and with all these new changes, we are surely going to see a new force emerge in the sport. Currently, the rumours are that Ferrari and Mercedes are the ones who are going to be on top and fighting for the title, but with Red Bull and, of course, Ford getting together, we can't rule out the Austrian side, who are very used to being the winners and, of course, will not give up their titles very easily. So, what do you think? Who will be the new dominant force in the 2026 era? And can we see the return of either Ferrari or Mercedes? Thanks so much for watching this video. We'll see you in the next one.